The Riley and Kimmy Show has the pleasure of having somebody on video that we've interviewed before, and you said, I will come back on The Riley and Kimmy Show, Yes. and that is Rob Gilroy. Hello, Rob. Hey, how's it going? It's going quite well. My, my question for you is, how is it going for you when something is about to see its final days? Oh, wow. Uh, well, I've gotten, I've gone from, uh, I've officially moved from, from panic into, uh, into acceptance. Now, this is Chew 60, correct? Yeah, yeah. Is Chu 60 all done and ready for publication? Not yet, not yet. I'm about halfway done. I'll be done with it uh, at the end of, the, end of this month. So Half, yeah. Halfway? Yeah, yeah, almost. Yeah. Whoa. It's moving pretty fast. Uh, it's a double size issue, so uh, it's taken me twice as long. But uh, it's it's been very emotionally trying after eight years. But, I mean, it's it's been absolutely like a blast. I mean, it, the book's done, uh, you know, way more than we ever could have expected. So it's been it's been awesome. How many pages do you do on average per day uh, well, with your work? Usually, uh, it takes me about four and a half to five weeks to do an entire issue. I mean, pencils, inks, and colors. Wow. So I can do, you know, roughly about a page a day, about, um, which I, I don't think I'll ever do again after Chew. I mean, I think after Chew, I'll probably hire a colorist. Okay. Um, I mean, it's it's been great and totally fulfilling doing everything myself, but I think I've got it out of my system finally. So, yeah. Now, Chew was the first big breakthrough yeah. thing for you, right? Yeah, 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 totally. I mean, I had done a lot of, like, little indie things here and there. But, yeah, Chew was definitely the big thing for me. Yeah. You and Lehman still get along okay? And oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. we're, we're already talking about what our next thing will be. Um, we've actually kind of already gotten it approved by Image. Get out of here. Yeah, yeah. I don't know when it'll be. I think it'll probably be, be next year. Um, just because I think we're both, we both have talked about taking breaks after Chew. And he's already bored. Oh, uh, really? So, and I'm probably gonna take off, you know, a month or two. And I'm, I'm thinking I'll get bored too. So, like, I would imagine we'll probably have something else out by the summer. So, yeah, we'll see. Now, if I remember right, October this month, a coloring book's supposed to be coming out, isn't it? Or November? Next month, next it's month. November. November. It comes out the same day as the uh, the last issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we actually just finished that, and that was really weird because we. I have to go back through all of my original art from the very beginning. So that's sixty something issues of art that I hadn't seen I mean in forever. So it was it was a, a big trip down memory lane before I jumped into the last issue. Did they increase the size of like panels or something for the coloring or no no, no. Uh, it was uh, I scanned everything in really, really high res, like twelve hundred DPI. Whoa. So it's a it's a big file. Uh, so we actually don't have a whole lot of pages that are panel pages. Most of them are just splash pages, like all the, the Poyo splash, like double page spreads and stuff, some covers and whatnot. It's really, really rich. I mean, it's, it's, it's a pretty good snapshot of the entire series. I'm looking forward to seeing that. It's a lot of fun. Now, yep. that will be in comic book stores November with, yep, yep, with yep. Chew 60. Right, right. It's our last gasp to, like, you know, get people's money, pretty much. But it's a lot of fun. He doesn't mean that. No, I mean a little bit. So, doesn't mean that. <laughs> So yeah, we're, we're really, really pumped about it. Do you, you know, I'm kind of curious. I've talked to other creators like do DC or Marvel, yeah. and they have a lot of their product that comes to them. Do you yeah. have the issues like one through 59? Yeah. You, you got them all collected. Yeah, I mean, I with Image, I mean, uh, we actually get a lot of comps. We okay. get like 100 copies of everything. Oh. So I have, I have this gigantic storage space that's almost full. I have everything. Um, the only thing, and the thing that everyone asks me for is, you know, issue one first printing. Oh. Which I have, I do have some. I'm saving for like you know the end. I understand. Um, but yeah, I have pretty much everything. Now, what were you drawing before Chew? What what got you? Was there something? Like, I, I have friends who want to be you know in the comic book industry or even yeah. want to be uh, comic strip artists. Yeah. They draw a certain character because they just love that character. Right. Was there a certain character that Rob loved, or were you just crazy drawing everything? I was doing a little bit of everything. I mean, before, I mean. Uh, the, the majority of the years that I was, I was kind of like when I was coming up, I was working. I was in college, so I mean, I was drawing for the uh, the school paper. Oh, wow. I did that for. I was a head cartoonist for almost five years, and just doing. I did two weekly strips, so I had. I have hundreds of strips of just assorted things. I actually did a biographical like strip, that was a massive mistake. Why? I had, yeah, yeah. I'll never do biographical again. Dude. It was actually based. I, I had people I knew in it. Oh no! So they were getting mad at you? Oh, yeah, like ex girlfriends and whatnot. No. So yeah, I did a lot of that stuff. Uh, after that, I just kind of went out there and kind of tested everything. Cool. Yeah. So, is it just as easy as it was when you started? What broke through 08? Am I correct? Right around there when you yeah. broke through. 
or has it gotten so more competitive? Mm. Is it harder in that eight year time span? Uh, time span? I, I don't know. I mean, we, I don't know. I mean, I think that it's hard to say. I think people still break in the same ways. I mean, it's, we all have the same stories just kind of tailor made for all of us. You can't get around like the amount of work that is necessary mm. and sacrifice to get in. I mean, we all kind of break in the same way as like goofy guys going to conventions, showing off our, showing off our portfolios. And then eventually like over the span of many years, you know, we get free work mm. and then that free work becomes, you know, get paid a little bit. And then if we're lucky, you know, eventually we'll maybe get to the point where we can support our families with it. But I think it's, it's the same. I was wondering in that eight year time span mm. with the social media increase and yeah. that, are you seeing a more competition with the world, with artists in the Philippines and other parts. Maybe eight years ago, you didn't have that that level. I don't know. I mean, I, I've never experienced anything like that. I can't really speak for any other artists, but I think that the cream. I, I think the cream does rise. It's just a matter of when. Okay. Um, the thing is, there's a, there's a ton of people that are really, really talented uh, that can do like that aren't consistent, and it's consistency that sets a, a, a creator apart. Because um, it would be, it would have been one thing if I had done one issue of Chew, or like maybe five issues of Chew, and it would have been successful. But then I flaked out. That would be. There's a difference between that and doing sixty something issues consistently of a thing. Right. Um, that kind of consistency is rare in the industry. Most most artists are kind of like. There's a lot of guys who can do one great image. Okay. But can you do like a lot of like? Can you consistently do an interior, you know, interior art on a book? Not a lot of guys can. So uh, the guys who, and I, I have a few artist friends, they're like, I want to be a cover artist, yeah. but they're not doing any of the sequential yeah. type action shots or... Yeah, you know. I, I, I came up with guys like that because it seems really nice and fun and, you know, easy. But I mean, you would really have to be an exceptionally amazing cover artist, I think, to break in specifically as a cover artist. I mean, most guys, when we would bring our work and a lot of uh, my buddies that wanted to break in as cover artists would just have pinups. And the first, you know, response they'd get from a professional was, okay, that's great. How about, where are your interiors? Like, where are your sequential pages? And it's like, well, I'm afraid to do them. And they know that. I mean, because they, I mean, yeah, it's really rare, I think, that anyone breaks in as just a cover artist. Okay. You have to be phenomenal. Yeah, but it is possible. Top two influences on you? Uh, Jim Mafood. Okay. Uh, and who's the other one? Uh... I don't know. I'll say, I'll say uh, Akira Toriyama, uh, Dragon Ball Z. Okay. Um, I was a pretty big Dragon Ball Z fan in, in high school. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think that anime influence gotcha. totally, totally comes through. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm going to let you get back to the fans here, and I'm hoping you'll come back on the show when you can talk about yeah. maybe that new project. Will you come back on? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I'll be back here in January. So oh, hopefully really? by that time, I'll probably have I'll probably be bored by then and well, have started working on the project. You know, if, uh, before then, if you want to come on, we've done the uh, the phone thing in the past. Yeah. Let's do that. And absolutely. you have an open mic, an open invitation to the Riley and Kimmy show anytime. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Rob. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh.